are a hit. So collectively, you boil all of that down, and I agree with John Stuve, who's the immediate past director general of the Food and Ag Organization of the UN, when he said about three years ago that we need to do better than we did in the Green Revolution several decades ago in order to meet these challenges that are out ahead of us. It's going to take every bit of technology employed wisely that we can produce in order to meet those challenges. If there's one slide, and I haven't shown this one a great deal out in the public, if there's one slide I show you today that I'd like for you to remember, this is, this is it. These are data from the Global Harvest Initiative. I've showed you several slides out of their report here, the water slide, the land slide. This is what's called the Annual Productivity Index for Agriculture Globally, where that top line, that top red line of 1.75% is what is projected to be the need to meet that global population growth that we have ahead. So 1.75% per annum increase in ag productivity globally. Okay, everybody with me on that one? The next line down, the, the black one in the middle, 1.4, is the rate that a year ago the Global Harvest Initiative Group said that the global index was trending on. Okay, so 1.4 was that projected percent increase in 2010 a difference of about 0.35%. The bottom line there of 0.85% is the trend line for Africa, in particular for Sub-Saharan Africa, where you saw much of that uh, population growth to occur. So you see what our challenge is. Our challenge is that dip between 1.4 and 1.75. Now that other line that's on there is the report for 2011 that the group released last fall of 1.74% with a lot of new assumptions, I will tell you I don't believe them. I think they overassumed the case in, in saying that that 0.34 could have occurred in one year in the, the change. So I think they've got some assumption issues in there that they're now working on. That group will be here on campus, the Global Harvest Initiative, will be here on campus during the water conference in late May. I'd encourage you uh, to come listen to them. This is another interesting graphic from that same report. This deals with China. So internally, domestically in China, the number of tractors per 100 square kilometers in mainland China. Going at the bottom from 1961 up to 2008, 2000 and 2008 at the top two uh, bar graphs. Look at what's happening there. Phenomenal growth in China. And for many of you that in the room that have been to China, you understand they've just touched the tip of the iceberg in rural China and what they're doing in that economy. So they're obviously uh, concerned, if you will, about food security. So all that says, just as background, that we know we've got to evolve. We know we have some major challenges that are ahead of us. And how are we going to do that? Well, I will tell you that I think we are positioned in Nebraska and the university is positioned here at the University of Nebraska to be right at the forefront of meeting those challenges at this point in time. I think we are exceptionally well positioned, uh, both as a state and as a university, to address those challenges. Uh, this, the uh, radio interview did such a nice job of saying, you know, here's, here's where we are as the number one commercial red meat production state in the U.S. That is a ranking we've not held for that terribly long period of time, as many of you will know. We stole it from Texas a few years ago. Uh, top rankings in the top end of corn and bean production in the U.S. We are definitely an agricultural state, no doubt about that. And the resources that we have in the state and the emphasis of the use of those resources in the state for meeting these challenges ahead have us exceptionally well positioned. Absolutely exceptionally well positioned. The, I would have won my gas card if I could have called in fast enough <laughs> that we have one in three jobs directly in Nebraska tied to agriculture or agribusiness. Those data are about five or six years old now. Uh, I would expect that number to hold, maybe be even a little more favorable in terms of one in three, one, one in two point something jobs uh, tied to ag and ag business in the state. This is the slide that is mind-boggling to many of us in this room. 
where we have seen the last couple of years in agriculture in this state uh, blow the top off of a lot of, of expectations. Commodity prices being what they are, uh, both in terms of grain and in livestock, have caused us to have a net farm, uh, net farm income record that is about 35 to 40 percent higher than the previous record uh, in 2011. So 5.4 billion, previous record was 3.8 billion in the state in 2008. So you can see the magnitude of the impact of that kind of economy uh, for us locally. I will tell you, and Steve, I know you'll, you'll know from visiting with your colleagues in farm bureaus around the country, that this isn't repeated all over the country. This is somewhat of a localized phenomenon in Minnesota, Iowa, Nebraska, the Dakotas, where these kinds of records are being set at these kinds of levels um, last year and we expect again uh, this year. The out years ahead of us, we don't expect that kind of level record, but we do expect to break the 2008 records again for the next several years as we see input prices kind of catch up, uh, if you will, the commodity prices to a degree. That 31% increase in land values that you see there is recent data. I did have the number of 22% in that slide until last week when Bruce Johnson and his team released the report for the year from our Ag Econ group where they, they quoted 31% increase overall in land values in the state of Nebraska in 2011. 22% had been what the Fed had reported uh, in some earlier data, Jason Henderson and his group. 31% phenomenal. I tell everybody I go everywhere I go, hoping that my wife will get the message of this if I tell it enough times. Her family farm ground in Clay County is two sections over from the ground that sold for 12,000 an acre. Here a few weeks ago, uh, I was at an extension conference in York when I got news of that, and I said, "Honey, <laughs> it is time to be thinking about that section, half, the, that half section that your dad didn't own as part of the family ground. Maybe it's time to start thinking about that." Um, <laughs> And uh, uh, in selling it. So it's phenomenal what land prices are doing. Are we in a bubble? I don't know. Uh, or is it going to come off the top? I don't know, but it sure, certainly is phenomenal where we are today. And when you consider that in Nebraska, over the next five years, we expect generational transfer of land in this state at earlier ascribed values. This $8 billion is at an earlier ascribed value to be $8 billion or more. That's just almost mind-boggling of where we are in this economy. It's just phenomenal. You all know that this state is a huge living laboratory for us that we intend to use to the very best that we can for the, for the world. Not only in feeding the world through our production, but in what we can export to other parts of the world and know-how and technology as well. Going from the Missouri River to the Wyoming line, more agroecological zones that you cross than you go east to the Atlantic. We forget that a lot of times, that we have such a huge living laboratory here within our own state borders. And we are so fortunate that our predecessors have invested in that living laboratory and have invested infrastructure across the state and people infrastructure across the state and extension that helps us to learn from those differences in different regions of the state with our research work uh, in the field, in the lab, and on rangelands. We also are blessed in this state to have the U.S. Meat Animal Research Center that we sometimes forget about at the university because it's a USDA site, but it is the largest, most comprehensive and well-known livestock research center in the world, right here in our back door, that we're a partner with through the university as we learn about uh, particularly the red meat industry. We have currently just over 1,600 employees in the Institute of Ag and Natural Resources at the university. I can tell you that they are very committed people. They are becoming more committed every day to feeling that they have these challenges ahead of them. And they're excited about what we can do both uh, in here in Lincoln and across the state with the 400 people that we have dispersed across Nebraska. I use this slide a lot internally with our folks because this is what I see and hear when I talk with them. They consider themselves to be servant leaders. That they're here to serve. They're here to make a difference for people in the state. And that they care deeply about the state of Nebraska. Uh, and we're certainly instilling every day even more of that kind of philosophy in what we do. 
We're about food, fuel, water, people, landscapes, communities. We have this new tagline I'm going to show you at the end of the talk that Jill Brown's been working on so hard for us that we're about to unveil. Those are our themes and priorities. And I can tell you that they are the themes and priorities of the university, not just INR. That is an important distinction. They are not just the priorities of the Institute of Ag and Natural Resources at UNL. They are the priorities of the University of Nebraska-Lincoln. And we've worked hard to make that happen, and I can assure you that uh, we believe in that. And I can assure you that these two gentlemen believe in that. President Milliken at the system level, Chancellor Perlman at the university level, are fully committed to the needs that we have ahead of us for agricultural research and innovation. And we have set our goal somewhat audaciously, I'll say that right up front, somewhat audaciously to be the best program in this arena in the world. That's our intent, to be the very top program in these fields anywhere in the world. And I think we're well on our way to making that happen. Now, Ann Bruns is in the back of the room. She was asking me for money, believe this or not. I walk in the door and she hands me a slip of paper and she says, you haven't paid your membership dues, you better get that done. <laughs> but Ann, is, Ann works with us every day through the University Foundation and she's, she's a great resource for us and she and her colleagues there. The University of Nebraska Foundation is in what, almost year four, coming up on year four, Ann, of a five-year capital campaign called Campaign for Nebraska. The Institute of Ag and Natural Resources had an initial goal of just over $49 million in that uh, campaign that had a $1.2 billion total campaign target for the university system across the four campuses. These are, I believe, the end of January kind of numbers for where we are. We have now broken, I understand this, uh, this morning, that we've now broken the $1.2 billion campaign goal for the system. And we are at just over 90 million for the Institute of Ag and Natural Resources. I expect that number by the end of the campaign to be 200 million or more. And I think we're in good standing to see that happen with some of the, the uh, gifts that we have in progress that are coming our way. That is phenomenal. And that's part of what it's going to take to achieve the kind of goal that I just told you to have the underpinning underneath programs that are not dependent on federal dollars, that are not dependent all on state dollars, as they have traditionally been in the past to deliver on this mission. I also will tell you that if we're going to meet John Stewart's goal of developing technology to meet the challenges ahead, we're going to have to work really hard at the, at the interdisciplinary type of work that we do. I'm trained as a geneticist. I learned everything I could learn about DNA and about cattle breeding and about genetics. But we're not going to solve the issues today by digging deeper down into disciplines. We're going to solve the issues by working across disciplines and by working at the interfaces of many of these disciplines. So we're designing programs in order to do that.